Hi guys, and welcome to episode three, my Amir multiplayer series. So, it's been a day since episode two. Stuff has happened again. I have logged on while I was on a little bit earlier, just for a short amount of time, just to get two new text research that had come through. So that was the wheel and well digging. And then I also put clothing some French f sentence I <laughs> will not pronounce, uh, but this is for leather clothes. So we've actually now got some free artists. I only had one person on it, couldn't actually have enough artisans with everyone working on these ones. Now we do have enough. So that should be done in, yeah, four hours. So that'll be on for next episode. Um, we've got two more texts that have come through. Let's check what they are. Animal capture. Okay, and that's a big one. Okay, no, I'm not interested. Oh dear. And the final one, stone building. So let's get stone building on straight away. Got plenty of miners on oh my goodness. Ten hours. Bosh, that's stone mining. Sorry, stone building done. So stone building is I think it's big houses. But for now it'd be forum. And forum's actually a really, really useful one throughout the whole game because it's especially for the early game, I'm only producing very little. It's a massive producer of culture. Later on it starts to peter out when you your population produces a state culture but in the early game it's pretty good let's look at what else we've got so we've got loads of culture level ups we've got 12 i need to spend this culture just sitting on culture is useless i need to do something with it what a message hello sir bacon you'd be interested in trade i'm looking for leather in particular Hammond. okay send him a little message what should i say so much. you've already got a rite of passage with him um Good day, Mr. Pax. I would definitely love to trade. But we do not have any leather to spare. At the moment. No, what should I say? Please let me know if you have any other trade demands. Sir Bacon. Bosh. There we go. So, let's see if he has any ideas. Property. I don't, ask him for it. I don't, I don't, I don't like to ask people for their ideas. Not unless I'm brand new and they've got their way ahead. So, so now I've got nothing to give him. Um, I'll send that for now. So, one thing I did also do is I moved... Do you remember from last episode? I had a little migrant family here. Sadly, because I forgot that's how migrants work, is when you get migrants um, through quest or whatever, they actually die. <laughs> well, they desert, not die, but they basically deplete from the formation. So when I'd logged on, I'd lost 75% of that formation, but I then had enough movement points to get that last bit into my capital. So it's a shame, but it's not the end of the world. These ones in my little formation, though, don't die. So... Remember, I can't walk on the Barbo territory, so I'll walk here and let's get back to base with these eight working porcos. But actually, if we check here, yeah, we're still growing 13 jobless. So remember, if we're not growing here and we're static and then we add more people to our population, we will actually finally just die off because we don't have enough food to support them. Or life quality, so not food, life quality. So we've also got some lettuce, chickpeas. Hammers and flint, so a nice little bit of stock to deposit. And we're going to disband these eight porcos. We don't need them in our formation. And another quest I got, which is actually a really, really good one, just one of the little uh, quests up here, is I actually got 12 warriors to spawn. So we definitely don't need two formations. We could combine them to have one big formation, but having two, while well, yes, we can actually explore more of the map, it's going to cause us state power. And state power is a massive factor for your loyalty, but maybe we can keep the formations. I've got, if we look, I've got uh, five jobless. You can see here, we've got 85 people, but only 80 jobs. So we don't need to delete them because actually we're gonna get 12 jobs, uh, 12 people who aren't really working any useful jobs. So maybe I should just explore two formations, one going this way, one going this way. Oh yeah, I think I would do that actually. So First, if we do that, let's have a look at... Sorry, that's my phone going off. Let's have a look at what we can do in the capital. So I did come on earlier. And I placed down one one or two clay mining buildings. So you will have, be getting some clay. 
and I placed down a couple gathering huts. Now that I got some extra hammers, if you remember last episode, I didn't have enough hammers to do this, so I've got an extra gathering hut here. Two actually, so now we're getting a lot more chickpeas. I got two clay mining down, and I got three potters down. We have a look. We're still producing a surplus of wood, so I could get one more. Well, actually, no. They're working at. It's only 0.6. Yeah, I'm gonna get one more potter down. We got the. We got plenty of clay. The so clay's not an issue. We've got two spare. A tiny bit of wood. Flint's our main issue though. So with all these tool makers, we are running out of flint. Oh, we want another, another little thing here. Treaty proposal. Oh, he's gonna give me. Oh, he's gonna give me uh, this one. Oh, very nice. So this was the one that I didn't ask for. I'm thinking. Send Captain Victor Proudeyes a message. Let me uh, let me find him in the, in the messages. Captain Victor Proudeyes. Always nice to be a friend of people to help you out. So that's a message sent to him. We can get I think maybe maybe one more clay miner. Yeah, we can get a full full tank here. So that's another clay mine done. Got them all just regular. I don't need the clay massively. Um, I think that's really it for jobs. We can't really get too many more potters down because any more than that and we'll start like just depleting that wood at a very very fast pace which then means I won't have the wood to build buildings with so I can't really do anything there I can get some hearts out I've got 21 leather 26 hammers and I haven't done a very nice job here I usually lay out my my base really nice and this looks horrendous so I'm gonna start my city planning a bit better the reason is because I'm just so used to not building on grass because I'm so it's so rare that I ever not rare, it's literally been the first time ever in my like, thousand plus hours I've ever had a city which doesn't have flint everywhere. So I'm not used to having to build on grass, but let's ignore that and get some nice city planning going. So I'd like to do five by five layouts. I don't want to build too much because I actually haven't got that much leather. So I'll just build five by three for now. And that's 15. Won't be enough to get all our, actually will it? No, I think it's just not enough to get all our slums, but definitely good enough for getting a bit more population. So, I think that's all really I can do. You can see, though, confidence going up to 47, because I've still grown. I'm going for quite a big city quite early on. Like, we get another 57 workers, or sorry, 57 population in the next 24 hours. And then, with these new houses and extra pottery that's going to be made, we're going to get even more. There it's... Oh, actually, we can look at these slums we've got here. So, yeah, we need a lot more houses. So, leather, hammers is my main thing. And hammers, we're going to run out because we actually don't have enough flint. Very, very shocked about that. Number score. We're 22nd, actually. So, we've gone from 35th to 22nd. Um, and it's very tight on score because, obviously, everyone's brand new. So, it's quite easy. Just a few points of score and you'll move up a place. But we can continue to grow. Now got one spare job, and that's in this clay exploitation. Um, we're getting a little bit of stone, making a surplus on meat. So things in the capital are going pretty well. And if we look here, I'm trying to put up a pottery stock so that I can get village centre because that gives us one expansion point, and it gives us the community hall. So that's a huge tech, huge tech, because the expansion point means you can upgrade to a village. Which obviously this is what this tech gives us. And the community hall means you get um some admin, which reduces your waste. Really that's kind of irrelevant at the moment, because if we look, we only make eleven waste. And if we look here, waste, it would reduce our waste by eleven, because it's almost all down to this local administration. But waste is kind of meaningless at the moment. Money, sorry, is kind of meaningless at the moment. Because the only thing we use this for, like I said in episode one, I think, is maintenance. We don't maintain any buildings really. We don't have any walls, don't have any different buildings, whatever. So I'm not too fussed about this forced labor value. Um, and actually, I'm saying it's a massive tech. It is because you can get three countryside instead of two. But these countrysides are really poor, really poor. We've got here. I had a look at them. Oh, I think I think it was either episode one. I had a look at them, or maybe it was in my own time. But there's nothing on any of them. So, yes, they're good when we get gathering uh, huts that can uh, produce their own crops. That would be with farming tech. But, like, there's no meat sources on these. There's no wood. 
there's no uh well we can't actually see ores yet so there might we might get lucky with some ores but until we can get farms uh, that can actually place their own fields these are absolutely useless um and it's just about thinking where to go do i go one here one here and then one here and try and push up to the north do i go one here one here and try and steal one of these these two i think this is the better idea because this is tropical so if you remember what i said there isn't a single tropical crop that um we can grow because i'm pretty sure the tropical crops are bananas um oh, bananas rice uh oh, i can't remember the other two but i know it's not what we can grow because we can grow wheat chickpeas and lettuce none of those can be grown on tropical so if i was to go here only thing i could have is buffalo uh herds as like actual pastures because buffaloes can grow on both tropical and arid but we don't have any buffalo yet so this tech sorry this region is useless i'm gonna have to go for these two and then from here i can either go here or here because there's two tiles connecting it so countryside's are not my big thing at the moment i'm not interested in that to be honest but when we can get farms i want this village center tech ready so enough of that yapping i've got i was yapping on quite a bit about that let's get these ones done so animal capture for a paddock butcher and meat definitely want that definitely want that so let's get five farmers on that and then it's a bit annoying because i'm gonna use up 15 farmers but we've got quite a few farmers so four hours this tech as well for property so property actually doesn't do anything on its own but it will i'm not sure which tech it combines with to give you stuff it might even be like leadership or something like that but let's get that one that leader is just village this is the end of the first part of this episode because i don't want to just end the episode here it hasn't been long enough let's do a little bit of exploring with these two new formations this one i'm actually going to keep waiting because they're only at two thirds ap but this one just make sure it's going to inventory nope so a little bit of exploring down here then we can actually move through this guy's territory a little bit and what you know oh, that's a bad event don't want that, don't want that. Down here, let's see if there's anyone down here. So actually, this is a... So yeah, he's, he's in a really nice spot. He's next to two rivers, near the coast, right next to the mountain, so if there's any ores there. So I feel like I want to come and nab his space up here. This guy... Again, this tropical really messes things up. So I think I, I need to go for these two. And then try and nab here, because even if he has three countrysides... I find it highly unlikely he'll go for his three countrysides on these three. Because I don't think he'll want to go for that mountain tile. But maybe he will. Maybe he will. But if I can go for this mountain tile, one, two, three, when I become a town, I can then go four, five, or four, five. But it's not great farmland, is it? Ugh. Anyway. Let's see what, what else is down here. Oh, 19 movement points. God, this is horrendous. Go up here then. Into here, that's that's ten, so that's used up a little bit less movement. No, I'm not interested in fighting. We've already had this one, haven't we? I'm not interested in fighting the cells. Oh, sorry, fighting for the cells. Oh god, the movement for all of this is really bad. We have got this one though. This is the one, the other one we got where it gives you two radius. Oh, that's huge. And look, there's just no one near him. I I've, I've sort of been unfortunately wedged in here. He's got all this space for himself. <laughs> Loads of rivers. It's really, ma I haven't seen a map this mountainous before ever. Maybe it's just I haven't been playing enough servers, but like, look at all the mountain range that comes through this entire bit here. Oh, wow. But anyway, so he's in a really nice position here. So what I'm hoping is he'll want to explore and expand further west. Not want to block me in, but maybe he'll play tactically and he'll just wedge me in to the corner here. If he does, he does. And when I get my second hamlet, because remember, the hamlet acts as a regional centre. So when you get your hamlet, that then has countrysides that form around it. And you can upgrade that to a village, get three countrysides. So I could always have, maybe struggle in my capital to try and get any good countrysides. But then I might get my hamlet and wedge it, I don't know, somewhere a little bit further up north. Who knows? But yeah, I'm not seeing any good locations for a second hamlet. Like, unless he completely moves over here know but well, one last thing i want to say before i end this episode is what i've just remembered is well not what i've just remembered but at least this is a new feature that i saw in my other bit of playing uh, like a few days ago different server is if you build a tile 
next to someone's base, someone's, uh, I don't know if it's regional center or a countryside. I think it's just their regional center. It actually gives them an automatic free claim on it. So they can declare war on you without any political power to spend. Um, to just annex your territory and they go to war to try and claim your countryside. So it's a bit dangerous to actually try and claim a bit too close to people. So maybe I might not want to claim this one. Oh, it's all, it's all tricky, but we'll have to wait and see. I will uh, come back in probably a day's time and continue the rest of this episode. So thanks for watching for now and I'll see you then. Well, hello guys, it's been a day in the second part of episode three of this Amir Multiplayer series. So just like the other day, I have done a little bit in the middle of the day, just because I don't want to wait 24 hours without touching it. That is just really going to slow us down. So we can see my little bit of work has paid off. 19th place. Like, yes, like that's not great. But when you've got 93 people on the server and I can assure you 70 of those people have not quit in the first few days. So 19th place isn't terrible, especially since we're not playing full time. If I was playing every two hours and micromanaging the crap out of this save we might even be in like 10th or 9th place so we're doing better than our neighbor there we're just a little bit underneath chief of Mahaman. We're doing better than them so we're doing pretty decent in our area i've got two army formations same ones you obviously saw the first part of this episode um that are on full ap this time so we'll move them around we've also got a few missions and loads of text done so let's look into it we've got trading nomads not interested. Basically, what all these trading missions that are coming in for, because I keep declining all of them, is you can either trade hammers, pottery, leather cloves, uh, three I can think of other on my head, and you get 10 shells. And the reason it's always for 10 shells is because the 10 shells is what you need for the leadership mission, which is a massive, massive mission. But obviously, because it's multiplayer, if just one person does that mission, they can like give that tech to other people. So it's just really a race to see who gets that tech first, because if you get that tech first, you're probably going to progress quicker and get more score. So I'm not interested in any of this, so let's say no, I'm not interested. One thing I also see in that sit point, this reminded me, in my mean in the meantime between the episodes, I did just put, well, well actually, sorry, it's two sit points now, because I'm used to it still being from the last time we played where it's just one sit point. They have like double the amount of sit points you generate, but then double the amount you need to go into resource production, but then leaving it as one for this. So it means it's cheaper to consume things, but the same price as it was before technically to uh, like get more efficient production. So I have put just two into wood because I'm producing quite a lot of wood in the territory. As you can see, I'm producing 7.2, which obviously isn't a lot for later on, but in the early game, that's quite a lot of workers working on wood. And also, I just had 14 points. So like, oh, what do I do with all of these? So I might as well put a little bit into that now. A few things, we've got no new messages. Please give me technology. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I love reading these messages. Uh, you got nothing interesting going on there. We've got a new tech though, food storing. So this is uh, gonna unlock us the granary. Again, might as well, ooh, ooh, ooh. No, I don't wanna actually use up any pottery. So no longer do that. Because I, one other major, major, major thing that I was rambling on about last, not last episode, at the start of this episode, is agriculture. And it came in earlier. I didn't have enough pots for it. Now we have enough pots. This is a major tech. Let's get six on that immediately. Next time I come to this episode of the recording, we will have that unlocked. So that is brilliant. Um, I could use research points to get it. But again, as I've said that I only do these recordings every like 24 hours, it doesn't make any sense to make it come quicker. It was just a waste. I'll save these points for where I begin a recording for an episode and there's a text just a tiny bit off. That's when I use these points. So next episode we'll have agriculture. That gives us 25 hoes. It means we can start making hoes. And as you can see from here, we can build fields for all the food stuff items in the game. We've got lettuce and chickpeas. I've got plenty of sieve points. And that's actually why I've been saving these support. Because remember, it's two sieve points for each production. So if I wanted to get this wood all the way up to fully produce, it would actually cost six more sieve points. That's half our sieve points gone. And I want to get lettuce straight away. So lettuce at max sieve point consumption, because I always put most foodstuffs to max sieve point consumption. That is eight sieve points instantly gone. So that's actually why I've been holding on to them. That will also then mean if we get lettuce, we can start getting our countryside. Because you can see here, they haven't got any, but Haman's got countryside. This guy's got four and he's obviously started to rebel because you can't have that many countryside as a Hamlet. So I'm not sure what the fuck he's doing. Uh, and then there's no one else I can see. 
another thing I learned literally earlier today is that I've said last episode or episodes before that you have to have two territories to then get like a let's say I wanted to get a countryside here or let's say here I'd actually have you have to have two adjacent territories I knew that I always assume that meant you had to have two countrysides you can actually have claims I just never use claims so what I can do is because I can have three claims with a village three countrysides three claims I can use my claims to push myself out so if I want to I can start to try and reach further out to these tiles that's something to think about because again if I go here I'm worried he might declare war on me to get those claims but at the same time I'll just put up a big army always on standby to, to fight him that's, that's, that's for later let's look at other stuff we've got a message from Haman hello what crops do you have access to so I'm trying to decide what to grow hopefully something my neighbours don't grow so we can trade Haman I will respond to his message give me a second and I'll tell you what I've written so this is what I've written let him know that we're producing the lettuce and the chickpeas and that we've got agriculture on the way I send that message I also see we've got another message from him here um ooh, a little role play message as well I wish to represent you this fair offer it's good to see your messengers reach our village we've been giving them food and drink too uh last last way home they look rather around healthy of appetites people have no lever to trade how would still be thankful if you can give us the whereabouts of any herds buffalo you can find we're working on learning how to capture the, these beasts and hope to be able to grow them in our farm within a few days we have eyes on ostriches but they simply aren't as tasty as buffalo we would of course do our best to help you set up your own farms once you people learn how to care for these massive beasts how man so we've got a bit of a role player up here i uh used a bit of a rp on amir myself i used to role players so bacon uh, i haven't done rp in about two years though just because uh <laughs> i'm the person i rp'd with kind of wrecked me in a war so <laughs> i've uh, just been sticking to myself since then uh but good to know that we've got a neighbor up here who's uh you know willing to trade and do all that sort of stuff so that that's pretty cool um the only buffaloes i can see to answer his question is these ones with the barbs so i'll let him know again another message which i'll uh, i'll cut to so i've got my uh, message written out to Haman, telling you about those barbarians guarding those pesky buffalo and um, so i'll send that off don't give him that you know i'm uh willing to to be cooperative because i don't want to go to he seems to know what he's doing if he's already got 325 score he obviously knows how to play a mirror so i don't want to mess around uh, i want it to be a nice peaceful series uh, just so i can get uh, some time because if I, if I get knocked out of this and like the copper age it's not going to be the most um uh, you know interesting series after if it's just 10 episodes long so anyway let's look at some other stuff we've got livestock so we can actually answer his question he said he was in a few days be able to start growing some buffalo or <laughs> herding buffalo i should say uh we can do that now because with that technology i can actually go into buffalo what? maybe i can't then what am i talking about i thought that one would no it just is animal capture so it just lets you actually capture the buffalo so i'm wrong we can't actually uh herd the buffalo yeah it's just uh gives us the paddocks okay never mind we have got stacking stones so stacking stones was stone building to get us the forum we've got the leather clothes technology um which is this one here clothing and we finally got this is mine which is the property one which is this one here which doesn't give us anything yet but it coexists with another technology to give us something so village center i'm very very close to getting it I uh, spent 20, we had 25 pottery because we'd got as much pottery as we needed. Uh, sorry, we've got as much pottery as I had to maintain stock. But I spent 20 of that 25 on agriculture, which is by far the most important because I need agriculture to not only boom my population in Castell, but I can start exploiting these countrysides um, to get some food from them as well. So agriculture is on the way. Village centre, which is, like I said last episode or the start of this episode, not actually that useful until um we can get agriculture anyway because why would i need three countrysides when i can't even use any so i can get that afterwards and i want to try and get this one this one and then get this one up here my reasoning is because this one i'm hoping will spawn copper or tin um because it's a mountain so it's much more likely to do so but even if it doesn't Oh no, maybe that's a risk I, I don't take. Maybe I try and go for this one. Because either way, all, all, all three of these is ones I could go to. 
they're all on um, uh, next week's bait so that they could all be claimed. Saying that though, this one is arid, this one's arid, but this one's tropical, so I couldn't actually grow anything on this one, so I can't go for this one. So it's either this one or. Oh, this is where it's tricky because if I've got these three, I can't. Sorry, if I've only got these two, I can't go up here because I need to have this one. And I've already said I don't want to go for this one. So maybe what I do is go for countryside, countryside. If I like the look of this one, countryside, that's my three countrysides there. If not, I claim it and then I can go countryside on these two. That's what I'll think about. So let's actually look at Castel. Um, as I said, I came on a bit earlier and I did place a few more jobs down. I placed two or three more woodcutters down. No, two more woodcutters. Two more woodcutters down. So that's six jobs doing uh, woodcutting. I um, place another clay mine and place another pottery worker. So now we're making 6.5 pottery. We're still making a massive profit in clay. Wow, 3.7 clay per tick with loads in the, in the bank. We are making two wood. Brilliant, so we've got loads of wood in the bank, making two wood. We've got 70 hammers with 3.2 in, uh, coming in per tick. But you can see, look, though, we've got one unemployed, and these tool makers are only working at 50% capacity. So even if I was to fire these guys, uh, I don't know if it'll work, probably because they're probably going to come straight back in. But yeah, look, they're still at only at 60%. So these people are literally just not providing anything. But we just have no jobs for them at the moment, so. If I fire all of these, this should only then start going to near 100%. So we only have enough flint. Yeah, it's not so even with just three tool makers, we don't even have enough flint to cover all of that. So technically, here we've got six wasted jobs. So we have six people unemployed, or seven people unemployed, because these tool makers are just useless. So actually, there's no point even having these, because, well, they just do nothing. <laughs> um, so I'll get rid of them. What can I do? I could have another potter. In fact, I think I am because we've got plenty of water and limited water, basically. But for so much clay, we're not going to use clay for anything else until we get the village centre. And even then, that one needs very much clay. And then we've got wood spare. Wood's our most critical resources out of, the, well, just the clay. The water is irrelevant. So, because the wood, wood you do need a lot of. But I've got a sip point in it, and I'm producing quite a bit. So in the meantime, another potter. See that I've actually messed that up not placed in line so let's just move these around these are free to move you can see here zero zero free so we can move these whenever we like but as you start getting more advanced buildings you can no longer move them anyway so that's six potters let's get them to high because i do want these filled up got our six potters we <sighs> can't really get any more farms still but i will need some more farms soon for the agriculture um Flint, I just can't get any more flint. Like we, we looked at this the other episodes, didn't we? Just trying to get as much flint as possible, and there really just nothing left. So we'll have to do what, what we've got. So what that means is I'm going to stock up as many hammers as possible. We've got 70, which is a very nice amount. By the time we get agriculture in 16 hours, we'll probably have about 110 hammers, maybe 100 hammers, which is enough to last us for a little bit. Because remember, hammers are just used for your houses, your leather houses, and um, for very early game buildings. Yeah, some mid game buildings that still use hammers, but once we've got these houses, if I have a hundred hammers, that might even last us a week or two. Um, and because we need to be full hoe production, because with just three tool makers, that really isn't enough to get hoes very quickly. And if we want to expand rapidly to, uh, you know, get more countrysides, we're just not going to do that with just three. Um, one thing, getting a forum, really, really good building. It doesn't cost anything to, like, run. Well, it costs one quarter, but it doesn't cost any resources to actually, like, run. No workers. You just literally get beautiful culture. And we've got loads of stone, loads of hammers, loads of wood, so let's get this down. I'm trying to think of a nice place to place it. I think there. Again, I want somewhere where... Yeah, I think here, it's got a nice little path just around it. I can once we get paths, I can uh, I can put a path around it. We've got that. I always want to get some more houses because um, we've got loads of slums. Like, look at the amount of slums we've got. So if we get more houses, that's massive, massive growth. So let's get doing that then. 
There we go. So we can get another row here. I'll leave this space here for some other buildings. But I can get... Yeah, I like this. Bit of a jagged city, but... Alright. Got two leather left. So I'm actually not going to use that because I need to get a building soon that uses leather. So that's plenty of houses for, for now to use up or take up some of these slums. Um, and a paddock. I think I do want to, I think I want to get it over here so it'll be hard to attack. That paddock there. But I'll set it to low for now. We don't want any workers working there. But that just gives me the opportunity to um, stock up on animals if we do you know, capture name, which I think we actually have. If I, uh, if I go to formations, Royal Explorers. Ah, one ostrich in just our warrior formation. Um, ostrich just, oh, I'm only ever familiar with animals that are either for, um, cloth, but not cloth production, but for textile production, which would be uh, llamas or sheep. I've used both of them in my different playthroughs. And I've used meat or leather production animals, like buffalo and cows before, but I've never ever used animals like chickens, ostriches, uh, capybaras. Uh, they're, they're the ones that come to the top of my head from Amir, and, I, and I've looked on the wiki for them. They're just not, not that, not that great. Um, it depends what you want. What I looked on the wiki, it said that if you use buffalo or cows. It is um, great for space, but hard for jobs. Because what I th it was saying is the cows use up space. Oh, or was it the other way around? I think it was the other way around where it's saying cows are job efficient, but not space efficient. So you need to use up a lot of space to get work out of them. But technically, they're much more efficient per worker. Whereas the ostriches and the chickens and whatnot, you don't need to use as much space. So they're good for your capital buildings. But they require a lot more manpower. So maybe for us, we might want to use ostriches because we've got very little space in this capital. But we'll have plenty of jobs to, to use them on. So it would need to be a question that I ask on the wiki, uh, not the wiki, on the uh, Amir Discord, just to find out. Might get some clever chap who, who, who's got 10 trillion hours on Amir and he might be able to uh, <laughs> tell me maybe actually ostriches aren't too bad. But on that note, that will be the end of this episode. Uh, it's been me rambling and rambling on, but we have made a bit of progress. We've got our city expanding. It's now starting to actually look like a little, uh, little proper village now with all these houses set up. We've got a forum being built. It gives a bit of culture. We've really started to develop our pottery industry. We have got a good little clay mine going. We are researching agriculture, which is absolutely major, major, major. We're going to get village center in the, in the next episode. Yeah, we've done a little bit of a chatter with the the neighbors things are going really good so if you've st stuck to the end of this video thank you so much i'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a like and if you haven't already uh subscribe like i, I want to continue to do this series as a whole finish it through so if you're going to stick around you might as well subscribe anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you in episode four tara